Am I the a-hole for reporting my mom for identity fraud? I, 24 male, and my girlfriend put an application to rent a condo and found out my mom borrowed about $43,000 with my social insurance. I talk with a lawyer, and it tells me I can either report my mom for identity fraud or pay it off or declare bankruptcy. I confront my mom, and she begs me not to do it and just pay off the debt. I don't have anywhere near that money and decided to do what the lawyer recommended. The lawyer told me that filling out a police report is not the same as pressing charges, but I'm still scared what might happen to her. We used to be very poor, and she used my social insurance to pay the bills and provide for me and my brother. This feels like I'm betraying her, and her and my brother refuse to speak to me. My relatives all stopped talking to me. Am I the a-hole here? Edit. People are asking me if my mom or family could pay it. I don't think so. My mom is on social assistance, and my family isn't much better off. My grandma has a house, but I'm not asking her to sell it. Also, my lawyer said a police report is just to get the ball rolling and clearing up the debts and recovering my credit. It doesn't include her name. Lawyer said providing a suspect is not necessary. But I'm sure if they tried, they would figure out it's her. My mom might face charges, but it's unlikely she would get jail time. People are asking why she didn't put the loans under her name. She's got terrible credit and has declared bankruptcy before, but I'm not sure when. I don't know if my brother has checked his credit. He blocked me on WhatsApp, Facebook, and his phone. To clarify, she probably didn't borrow $43,000. It's probably ten dollars to $20,000 that grew with interest, fees, etc. Now for the top comment. Not today, Hall. $43,000 is a serious sum. You could consider not doing it if she paid that debt off, if you were feeling okay with that solution. But it's unlikely to happen if everyone, including her, thinks you should be the one to do it. Do they think you're just going to pull that money out of a hat? They're always going to be feelings hurt because family. But is it what family would do to put someone in debt by committing a fraud? Nope, nope, nope. She doesn't have the money. She gets social assistance, which is barely enough to cover her rent and food. That isn't your responsibility. Your responsibility is the $43,000 worth of debt that she illegally put under your name. It wasn't to take care of you and your brother. You don't take care of your children by doing illegal things to them. Funny how the brother also thinks Opie is a hole. Probably because Mommy Dearest didn't steal money from him. Not a hole. Your mom committed fraud and left you owing $43,000 to the government. I know things can get desperate for people sometimes, but the fact that she didn't tell you, hasn't made attempts to pay it back, work with you to pay it back, that shows she's not taking responsibility for her actions. Let me ask you this. If it was anyone besides your mother, what would you do? Not today, Hall. Fraud is fraud. It's horribly short-sighted to put your child into debt like that. Also, she wasn't providing for them. She was making Opie knowingly provide. Next story. Am I the a-hole for locking my garage so my brother-in-law and sister can't open it without talking to me? I bought a house. I specifically found one that had a mother-in-law apartment so my parents could live with me and save some money as they get older. My sister's husband lost his job, and so I let them live in my house for almost two years while I lived in the mother-in-law apartment so they could save and get back on their own. Well, after two years, they hadn't saved anything, and so I told them it was time to leave. They moved out last June. I moved back in upstairs, and my parents moved in downstairs in the apartment. My sister and her husband left a lot of things in the garage since they moved into an apartment. This annoyed me and my wife, and eventually made them clean it out, but still had some things in there, mostly junk in my opinion, but also some tools. They would always just show up and take and slash or leave stuff in my garage. Last week was the last straw for me. Her husband showed up, opened a garage, and stored a top to his Jeep, which took up most of the space. No hello, no text, nothing. I felt disrespected. I changed the code to the garage and locked the side door from the inside. Today they showed up again to get a tool. I assumed they were visiting my mom. She told them to ask me to get into the garage, and they got really mad. They said they are family. It's their stuff. They shouldn't have to. I feel like it's my house, and while I would probably never say no if they asked to store something, 
but it's common decency to ask someone first. Even just send a text saying, hey, I'm dropping off something today. Not today, Hal. Your sister and brother-in-law sounds like moochers. I wouldn't give them the garage door code. Probably should also tell them they have until the end of the month to get their stuff out of your garage, or it'll wind up on the curb. They are moving into a house in four weeks, so I assume they will finally take all their stuff. That's good, but don't assume they will. Maybe drop a hint like by telling them, now that you are getting your own place, you can get all your stuff out of my garage finally. Not day hull. It is time for them to take everything out and put it in storage. Inform them that they have two weeks to empty it out. After that, everything in there will be considered abandoned, and you will keep what you want and throw away the rest. I really thought this would be more controversial. I'm starting to not feel guilty at all about it. Not day hull. They don't live there, and they shouldn't have their stuff in your garage. You let them stay two years rent-free, and they show no appreciation and squander the opportunity. You've done enough for these people. Pick a date and say they have to come get their stuff on this day. All of it. After that, it's going to the dump. Not today, Hull. In my family, we all share. My sister has left her tires in my garage, and my parents have stored my stuff, and so on. Sharing our space is really normal in my family. We always ask permission first and always let each other know when we will be picking stuff up. We would never dream of just randomly showing up to pick up or drop off stuff. I'd be right pissed if someone kept coming into my garage without asking first, and I'd be even more pissed if someone dropped off something large without asking first. What if you were planning on using that space that is now occupied by a Jeep top? Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to support my family forever? I-24 male still live at home with my grandma, so does my older brother, my uncle, and my mom. For my whole life, we've kind of just helped each other out with everything financially. Even since I've been an adult, they have helped me with a ton. Only in the last year or so have I realized how awful this is and decided to work on getting my own place. They're all so used to this way of living that there's no way any of them besides my grandma could make it on their own. I for one am sick of it and want to be independent. So I stopped smoking cigs and grass and stopped giving them any extra money and have been saving literally every extra dime I have and just finally got a car. Still saving to move soon. My brother on the other hand spends all his money on grass and video games, spent his entire tax return on a new Xbox and smoked the rest. Literally the next day, his car messed up and is basically trashed. After about a week of taking him to and from work every morning immediately after getting off of my job, I ask him if he's been looking at any cars, and he says, No, you have a car. I don't need another one until whenever you move. I told him kind of harshly how this BS, that I have worked myself off so I could have my own car, and I'm not giving him rides forever if he's not gonna even try to get his own. I told him if he hadn't immediately spent his tax money in crap, he could have fixed his car, and that he needed to change his priorities or he would never get anywhere. A few days later, I heard him talking about me to everyone and telling them how paid and goes and gets a decent job and says screw all of us, and now he's gonna move after all we've done for him. And they all seem to agree. In my head, I know I'm just trying to be an independent, responsible adult, and I don't want to be stuck in this lifestyle anymore. I feel like such a loser because of the way my home life is, and I want to get out before I end up like them, a fully grown 30 plus year old adult living with grandma. But my anxiety riddled brain makes me feel so guilty about betraying them. Sorry for the length and if this isn't very well written. I'm on my phone at work typing for a few seconds at a time, lol. Just trying to gain some clarity. Now for the comments. Not today, Hull. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to be independent and to have your own life. Don't let them make you feel guilty about it. Good luck. Not today, Hull. I used to do everything for my family. I started therapy because I was so unhappy and realized I was enabling everyone. My family was happy and relaxed because I took care of all the hard stuff. So, I stopped. There was about a year where everyone was calling me selfish, getting mad at me, and guilting me when I wouldn't help. But eventually they started learning to deal with their own issues and grew as people. I started feeling happier and just better overall. It was 100% the right move. My only regret was not doing it earlier. There will be pushback because the dynamic is changing but that's not a bad thing. 
When they ask for help, take a step back and say, do they really need my help or would I be enabling them? Not they haul. You've quit doing things that were costing you extra money and at least one that will help your health long term and are working hard to better yourself and your life. This is a good thing. Telling your brother he needs to get his car situated before you move is smart. It sounds like your family is happy where they are and how they live, and that's fine. Make it clear you're not judging. You just want something different. Not day haul. Since I come from this kind of family, I think you should become familiar with the phrase, crabs in a bucket. Not that I've ever had a bucket of crabs in real life, but supposedly they will not let any of the other crabs escape. And if one makes a break for it, they'll grab his little crab legs and drag him back down. Your family will be angry and resentful, and they will badmouth you and try to use propaganda like, family doesn't do that. And you have to develop a little healthy contempt for that kind of life in order to get the motivation to work yourself out of it and onto something better. He may try to convince you that you are betraying them or say that you're putting on airs, but really he is scared that one less salary in the house means that he will have to step up. It means that your brother will have to become more responsible, and he doesn't want to do that. If you work full-time, you deserve the dignity and privacy of living on your own. It's a responsibility and a privilege. Your ambition isn't even crazy or radical. It's totally normal to want your own place. But having goals of your own just shines a spotlight on his situation, and now that he has to really examine his life, he's embarrassed by it. Living at home at 30 with your mom and grandma, he was speaking out of anger, shame, and fear. You provided a cushion for his life and you're taking it away. Last pot? Oh no. Ignore him and forge ahead. Last story. Would I be the a-hole if I told my roommate's mom that I won't be following her rules in my apartment? My roommate, who I'll call Emily, and I, both 21 female, are college students and we live in an off-campus apartment together. We split rents and utilities 50-50. I pay for my part myself, but Emily's parents pay for hers. Emily's mom is a bit overbearing and has a lot of rules for our apartment. The main one being that no boyfriend are allowed to sleep over, as it's against her religion. She specifically told Emily to have a talk with me about this subject to tell me this isn't allowed after we moved in. Emily doesn't care if I have my boyfriend over for the night, as she does it all the time without telling her parents. However, it strikes me the wrong way that Emily's mom feels like she can impose non-negotiable rules on me when she doesn't pay for any of my part of the bills. Today, Emily's parents are coming to visit, and I expect her mom to go over all of the rules that she sets with me. Would I be the a-hole if I told her mom that, with all due respect, I pay my portion of the rent and she doesn't have any control of the things I do in my own apartment? On one hand, I feel like I'm justified. This woman is trying to impose her own religious beliefs onto me in an apartment that I pay half of the bills for. The idea of just rolling over and telling her that I'll obey her demands when just doing my own thing behind her back doesn't sit right with me. However, after speaking to my own mother about the subject, she thinks that it would be disrespectful. She says that even though I'm paying for my half of the rent, Emily's family is still paying for this apartment and they should be able to have a say of what goes on even if Emily and I just end up breaking those rules anyway. I've spoken to Emily about this subject and she doesn't care if I tell her mom that I will or will not be following those rules, as long as I don't indicate that Emily breaks them. So I was hoping to get some outside opinions here. Reddit, what do you think? Would I be the a-hall if I told my roommate's mom that I won't be following her rules in my apartment? Not the a-hall. 1. She's not your mom. 2. She's not paying your bills. Tell her to buzz off. This is the only correct answer. Well, maybe Emily gets the act from apartment and her life is worse. You have every right to tell the mom you won't be following her rules. But don't be surprised if you're looking for a new roommate soon after. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about too. I know it's tempting to tell them to buzz off, but I think it would be preferable for you and Emily to just grin and bear it through this visit so you can get on with your lives when they leave. If they are that strict, I wouldn't be surprised if they required Emily to check in with them constantly or force her to move if you just start dropping F-bombs. Not a day haul. Your answer should be, I'll give that all the consideration it deserves. Edit. Thank you all for your input. 
Her parents stopped in briefly, but then left to go get food. They'll be staying here overnight, though, so I'm planning on updating this later tonight to let everyone know what goes down when we all sit down to talk. I also just wanted to say that after talking to Emily further about this, it turns out that her dad really doesn't care what I do and thinks that his wife's demands are extremely unreasonable. This is why Emily doesn't care if I speak up or not, because I guess that even though her mom is paying the bills, it's her dad who makes the money to support them all. Emily says that her dad would never make her move just because her roommate doesn't follow traditional values, and even though her mom is a bit of a squeaky wheel, her words not mine, her dad makes all of the final decisions here.